and welcome to Skills to Pay the Bills and today's segment of Build Your Difference. My name is Pierre Walters, producer at Branddesk, and I'm joined today by Brittany Walters, art director at Branddesk. And recently we had the pleasure of working hand in hand with new author Sharon Alvarez on her best selling book, Rusty Bobby Pins. <laughs> on this episode of Build Your Difference, Sharon joins us virtually to share more about her new book and the process of building her author brand. We want to welcome to the show Sharon Alvarez. Welcome, Sharon. Thank you for having me. It is our pleasure. We're so excited to see you and to connect virtually uh, right here on, on the show. This is so, what a, what a pleasure. This is so wonderful. <laughs> Thank you. Thank Sharon, you. we're just going to dive right in. What, what, when did you first realize that you wanted to be a writer? You know, I didn't actually realize I wanted to be a writer. What I realized was I wanted to write a book about my mother. Mm -hmm. And the stories that it all, it all became part of a, uh, my interest in history and understanding who we are, where we come from. And I had that opportunity during the uh, evening after dinner where my mother washed dishes and I dried. And she told me all about her childhood, her little escapades. She told me about her grandmother, grandfather, the aunts, uncles, her parents, her siblings. And instead of having a bedtime story, we basically had it while we were cleaning the kitchen every evening. <laughs> nice. And as time went on and I'd learned I'm an avid reader, so as time went on, I continued to read books, mysteries. Later on, I started reading biographies about people, uh, you know, in business, business management books, reading stories about various people in business. In order to help myself, I um, decided, you know what, I should write the story about my mother. Mm. I thought it was interesting because she and I were the only ones in the kitchen when we had these conversations. Mm -hmm. So my three brothers didn't grow up hearing them. My children, you know, know grandma as grandma, but they didn't know her as the whole person that she was. Mm -hmm. I mm -hmm. felt it was important for them to know her as a whole person because I felt like I knew her as a whole person. Wow. And I just felt that was important for them to know. Yeah. Sharon, if I may ask, how, what does your family think of, of this book you've written about your mother? Well, the funny thing about it was it, it started out as a weekend uh, activity, Saturday mornings, I'd get up and write a chapter here yeah. and there. And because I started writing it, I, I, I tell people I started writing it 20 years ago. <laughs> but, when I, but when I went through the tapes, when I went through the audio tapes that I had taken of conversations that we had, I realized that the first time I started collecting the information was in 1993. So that was even mm. more than 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. So I, um, you know, that was the process. Now, what was the question again? Well, uh, you know what we, we what we want to know is how long. I mean, you said 20 years, but like yeah. if you could, if you could kind of just sort of segment specifically the the time you actually spent literally writing the book in front of your computer. Did you do it mm -hmm. like you know bits and pieces over 20 years, or did you just yeah, sit down I one did day? It. I did it bits and pieces over 20 years. Mm -hmm. Whenever I had a chance to visit, I made sure I had a videotape or audio tape, and we would tape conversations. I. Um, the coronavirus was the focus. Right. Mm. Now I retired in 2016 and I just thought, well, when I retire, I can really knuckle down and, and get this done. But here we were in the middle of the coronavirus and I had been retired four years and had not finished <laughs> the book. I was still doing so many other things and I'm not a procrastinator and I cannot believe why I procrastinated on this project. But anyway, that March of 2020, I sat down, I said, this is serious. I could catch this disease. I could mm. die. This will be sitting in the computer and nobody would even know it's there. Oh my God. I, I had wow. like, 30, I seriously, I had it. I really, I really was nervous that I yeah. had, you know, that I could catch this disease and die. And 35 chapters are sitting in the computer with no way to go. So mm. I sat down every day at five o'clock and worked till midnight writing it and September 7th, 2020, I finished it. 
So would you would wow. you say that is what your what your writing schedule was uh, from five that, p.m. And until it, midnight? And even and even then, I was procrastinating because <laughs> you know, I, I, I hear stories about people getting up at three o'clock in the morning and writing for five hours. And no, I got up in the morning and had all these list of things to do. And once that got done, I said, okay, five o'clock to midnight, I'm mm-hmm. writing. Wow. wow. Well, Sharon, it sounds like your overall sort of drive to finally get this book out there. Yeah, was, I'm a disciplined person by nature. Yeah. That's why it was funny that I, it took 20 years to actually write it, but, <laughs> you know. Well, what did it take on those mornings where you were just tired and you just didn't want to get up or, or you didn't want to sit down after a long day and keep writing? Like what? No, no, I, I stayed, I did it because I needed to get this done. I felt yeah. like you really, you know, procrastinated long enough, Sharon. <laughs> you're, you're 67 years old. You've got more time behind you than you have ahead of you. You need to get this done. And and um, I do have one nephew that passed away for Corona mm-hmm. June 1st. Oh, I'm sorry about that. And he won't get to see the book. Yeah. Well, you know, we're, we're really just so glad that you that you did stick to it, that you did finish it, you know, after all these years, because it's a story that that needs to be told. And I'm sure for your family, it's an incredible experience to be able to to learn more about the history of, of your family. I mean, you know, I wish we had. I wish I had something like that in my family, where I could yeah. r- literally read in narrative form uh, the history of my grandma or mm-hmm. even my great grandma. But you know, we're, I, I'm not blessed with that opportunity. So you're really giving your family an incredible a gift with this with this book, and I think it's amazing. It's something that we can all really um you know benefit from i'm i'm curious in the process of writing your book did you did you notice any kind of interesting sort of quirks you know as a (laughs) as a writer like that kind of helped you stay on track or or just helped you to kind of get this through the finish line i like that when i saw that question i said to myself okay well what kind of quirk did you have besides the fact that it took you 20 years to (laughs) The, um, I, I feel like if I had a quirk, it was the the five to midnight time frame mm-hmm. because there were times when I could have gotten up in the morning and started writing, but I stick to a schedule. I'm retired and I still have a planner because mm-hmm. I, I overextended myself in retirement. So I have lots of things that I have to do. So by five o'clock, I'm done. I consider that my time. Mm. And so... That was my quirk, just saying that this is my time, and I'll, and I stayed up late because I'm usually not a, a 12, 1 or 2 o'clock in the morning person, but mm-hmm. I'd get going, and the time would go by pretty fast. Amazing. Mm-hmm. How, did you, how did you go about actually publishing your book? What was the process like when you decided, <laughs> you know what, okay, I've got the manuscript done, mm-hmm. I am ready to give this to a publisher and to start the actual publishing process. How'd you go about doing that? Well, that was it. That was another uh, adventure. I was not planning to publish the book. I figured I'd write it, I'd put it on a PDF and email it to everybody. Oh my mm. goodness. And, and I have friends, and uh, one of my friends, Tia Young, you know, I told, now a couple of my friends knew I was writing this book, but I just hadn't told the family. Ah. And she was like, oh, you gotta get this published. Cause she met my mother, she knew my mother. Mm-hmm. And she said, no, you've, you've gotta get this published. I know somebody that could help you get this published. So I was like, really Tia? <laughs> I said, how long, how long is that gonna take and how much is that gonna cost, mm-hmm. you know? So, you know, as, as, as proud as I am of what I did, you know, I, I'm not Michelle Obama writing, writing becoming, you, you know what I'm saying? Right. Mm-hmm. So I, uh, I just didn't see myself in that mode of uh, publishing. But uh, we had that conversation. She gave me uh, Walter's publishing company information. Mm-hmm. And a couple of days later, I get a phone call from Walter's publishing company. <laughs> And I said, Tia, because she probably knew I wasn't going to call you. Mm-hmm. And, and, and she asked you to give me a call. So we had a, a really nice conversation. You were very pleasant to talk with. Mm-hmm. Uh, and the, uh, the process didn't seem that daunting. You know, I, I felt like I would have guidance, you know, every step of the way. Yeah. Mm. 
So I said, and it would look nice, you know, if it's in a book form and, you know, put it on a bookshelf and I could have copies, you know, to, to give to the grandchildren because I have to actually have two grandchildren. Okay. And they were, they were really excited that I was writing a book. Nice. Well, I, I remember that, that conversation and I'm, I, I remember uh, just hearing what your vision was and thinking, you know what, yeah, this is definitely the right move and I'm so glad that that you that you took that move. I'm so glad because now you have this beautiful book. And from my understanding, I mean, you've gotten publicity. I mean, you're written. You're they're, they wrote about it in the paper. You've mm -hmm. gotten you know you've gotten uh, press from this. You're on the show now. I mean, did you did you envision <laughs> any of this when you no, when it, you it, started? It does it does feel a bit. What's the? I don't. I feel like I'm bragging about something that I wanted to do as a family memoir. Mm -hmm. I didn't realize that reading about people's families was, would be that interesting to anybody other than my own family. I uh, realized, I started doing some research and realized that there are a lot of family memoirs out there. I'm part of a book club and pretty much every book we've writ read is based on somebody's life story. Mm -hmm. I mean, Orange, Orange is the New Black. Uh, you know, we're reading a book right now called Group that's about a woman who took group therapy and she said it saved her life. So I realized mm -hmm. that, and I've had a couple of people that I know personally who have written and self-published books about their own experiences. So I said to myself, okay, this is probably a, a genre that I hadn't thought much about, but uh, it's interesting, and now that we're into the 23andMe and the uh, Ancestry.com mm -hmm. era, uh, I thought it was interesting that people don't know about their ancestry, and they got to go to a website. Right, <laughs> right. And you know what? I'm going to, let me just say that 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 is very, that I think we're all in that situation now. We all are like, wait, wait a second, we have these resources that are available to us, but it's so wild that we have to go outside of our families in order to learn mm. about our families. Mm. So I tell you what, I want to dive more into this, Sharon, as soon as we come back from our break. So we're going to take a quick break. But uh, for those of you watching, I want you to stay with us because when we come back, we're going to learn more about Sharon's unique author journey. Hi, I'm Josh Temple. You might have seen me on TV where I help folks turn their houses into dream homes. But forget construction. Parenting is the toughest job there is. So when you need help or advice, turn to the parenting experts at Boys Town. Welcome back to Skills to Pay the Bills and this segment of Build Your Difference. Today, Brittany and I are joined virtually by Sharon Alvarez as we learn more about her best-selling new book, Rusty Bobby Pins. Now, Brittany, we, we were just getting into, you know, family and this idea of yeah you know, needing to go externally to mm -hmm. these different services mm -hmm. like 23andMe and whatever the other one is. Like um, Ancestry. Ancestor, yeah, Ancestors.com <laughs> or whatever, to learn more about our own family. And here, Sharon wrote a book yeah. uh, that is talking about uh, her family so that newer members of her family, the next generation, can have a reference point. Yeah. And we, why don't, we should do, like more families should do this, don't you think? I, I, I think it's a wonderful step that Sharon took. I mean, just, and just hearing about your whole process sharing about how long it was like on your mind and mm -hmm. just the things you may have told yourself to, to stop yourself from accomplishing this. And now here you are, you're at the other end of that and, and seeing how it's affecting not only your family, but people outside of your family and inspiring them. Um, what does your family think of all this? What do they think of your writing? The, uh, it, like I said in the beginning, I hadn't told my family I'd been writing this book. My mother knew I was writing it. Mm. And she was aware. In fact, I tried to get her to write it. She was like, no, that's OK. <laughs> As I delved into her story, you know, really taking a deep dive into it, I realized that, you know, there were lots of areas that she just was not interested in going back down memory lane on. Mm, sure. But I still felt those instances were important things for my family to know. The um, when I went into the mode, uh, you know, the corona mode, I call it, of, of really, really writing, I still hadn't told them that I was writing the book. I told them about it once it started. We, get, we started getting close to the publishing date. Mm. 
Mm-hmm. My my three brothers, their remaining siblings, um, were surprised. They they were like, "You you wrote a book about mommy?" I'm like, <laughs> "Yeah." I said, "Everything, 68 Sumner Avenue, because that's what we called where we grew up." And they said, "Well, I certainly want to read that." And then they started telling some of their childhood friends that they still were in touch with, mm. which I thought was interesting because <laughs> I'm not in touch with many of the kids that I knew, you know, back in 68 something Avenue, but they are. Yeah. Then I um, told my children about it, you know, my daughter and my son, and they were like, okay. And the grandchildren knew. Now they are eight years old, twins, mm-hmm. and they were really excited. They kept asking me, when's your book going to be done, Grandma? <laughs> And I just gave it to them uh, earlier this week. I gave them their own copy and they were like really excited. They were in the car the whole time flipping through it. That's so cute. You know, Uh, Sharon, I'm really curious. What was one of the most sort of surprising things you learned as you were writing your book? One thing that I learned at one point, I gave the book draft to my daughter and daughter-in-law to review it because I felt like I could not find my errors. Mm -hmm. I would find errors, I would make the adjustments, send them in to the publisher, and then come back and read the draft again and find a whole lot more errors. And I'm like, why didn't you see this the the first time you were looking at this? Mm -hmm. So I gave it to my daughter and daughter-in-law to read the book and figure a fresh set of eyes and they could look at it. And my daughter was hesitant to read the book. And I asked her why, she said, well, because I know at some point you're going to have to talk about Felicia and that's going to make me sad. She said, but when I read the book, you didn't talk about Felicia. And I Mm. said, yes, I did. Yes, I did. And she said, no, not the way you should have talked about it. Now, Felicia is my youngest sister who died at the age of 42 as a result of the dust from 9-11. Oh, my goodness. And, And that was, you know, very, very unexpected. A situation for our family. I actually blocked that out. I'm writing a story about my mother's life and I'm talking about her grandmother and her mother and her shoes and her favorite colors and things she liked to eat. Mm-hmm. And, I, and here she was a woman who lost a child and I kind of glossed over it. Mm. And I realized that as a writer, if we're going to write a story, we need to, of course, be authentic. We need to be honest. But I guess as human beings, there will be times when we ourselves find ourselves in a situation where we cannot be as honest as we need to be. Right. Mm. And it wasn't that I was dishonest. I just had a hard time covering the subject. Yeah. So I had to go back into the book and look at it again. And it took me two weeks to get myself together, mm. to, get, to get the words, to say what I wanted to say about that part of my mother's life. And in doing that, I realized that I didn't cover her as a mother-in-law, a grandmother, or a woman who lost a child. So I had to add several, at least two, three more sections to the book to complete her full life. Mm. So sometimes as a writer, you're going to have a hard time covering certain subjects. And it's good to have people who are going to review it for you and they can point those types of things out to you. Yeah, that's a a good, that's a great point. And you know, it it makes me, I mean, I could only imagine how difficult that must have been. I mean, I'm sure that plus many probably other areas where, you know, you're having to take a trip down memory lane and sort of unearth things that maybe aren't comfortable to, to, to talk about or things that, you, like you just said, you may have even blocked out and had to remember, oh, wow, I have to be authentic. So my question for you is, you know, do you have any other suggestions for other people, other authors who are in a similar situation where they're they're writing a book maybe for the first time and, and they want to be authentic, but you know, when they reach these sort of challenges, it's, it's, it's kind of putting that authentic, authenticity to the test, so to speak. Mm-hmm. What would your advice be to, to new authors who are in sort of a, a similar journey? Well, my advice, and I've said this to a couple of people that I've talked to, because like I said, I'm 68, so we're all in that age of you know, 
I guess what reflecting mm -hmm. on our lives. Mm -hmm. I I tell them they should write their family story. They should talk about the memories they have of everybody that can remember that's passed on to give to their children, grandchildren, nieces and nephews. And then the other advice I decided if I ever write another book, I'm definitely going to have a, a group, you know, that will review it as I write it so they can help me, you know, stay on track. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I did, this was a singular, a solitary uh, pursuit that I, um, and I didn't have anybody looking at it until the very end, the publishing phase. But next time I feel like I'll have a couple of people that are gonna help me as I go through the process, mm. so, you know, sooner. Yeah. Now, now, Sharon, other than your family, um, are, do you hear at all from like readers? Do they, do they like reach out to you or do you well, kind of hear from friends of friends of family of friends? Yeah, I have, I have a network of, of people, you know, I, I sent the information out to my Facebook friends at first mm, mm -hmm. and because those are people that I know and know me. And as, as, a, as I said in my bio, I worked for the federal government, so I know folks from all over the country. Wow. And so I have been getting, uh, Facebook posts with the book, people holding the book, <laughs> nice. and then telling me that they, they bought the book. Now that was interesting to me because I'm saying to myself, well, this is a story about my mother. I'm not thinking that a lot of people are going to be interested in, you know, my mother, but they know me and I guess they find me interesting. And I guess they thought it was interesting that I actually wrote a book. So they want to read it. Mm -hmm. And so that's, that's been interesting. Um, the um the book club that i'm part of they uh showed interest in it because they heard me talk about it during book club when we have discussions yeah um and personal friends that like i said they knew i didn't talk to my family a lot about it but some of my friends did so they were all happy to you know for it to come out so that they could get a copy and read it so i think people are interested in family history yeah. I'm hoping, what I'm hoping is that this book will encourage other people to start talking to their elders, or if they're the elder in the family, to start writing down yeah. those gems of information so that we don't have to go on a website to find out where we come from. <laughs> you know, we, I think that's something that families should talk to their families about. It absolutely is. And it, it's shocking to me that it's not really the case at the moment. It really is shocking to me. And, and I think it wasn't until we even, we began having discussions about, about your book that I even really realized, wait a second, why don't I have this in my family, you know? And there, right. there's definitely an older generation uh, in my own family that, that I think would, would love to do something like this. And I, and I haven't even brought that to them as, as an option. And I, well, like, like I said, I started writing this when I was in my forties, mm -hmm. I was always interested in photographs and family history. Mm -hmm. And that's because my mother read you know, verbally, you know, told me these stories as a child. Mm -hmm. So what you have to do is the uh, younger folks need to get the tape recorder or this cell phone, you know, it's got <laughs> recording on it and start talking to grandma, mm -hmm. start, start talking. Now I, um, in addition to writing stories about my mother, I, I did some research on her sister-in-law, Helen. They were good friends. I talked to Helen. I talked to my uncle who was still alive at the time and got some information from him. He had a good memory. So mm -hmm. even after my mother died, there were still a couple of other folks that I spoke to mm -hmm. uh, who gave me other information. Yeah. I spoke to a cousin, a second cousin, who was able to tell me some stories about my grandfather because my grandfather was her uncle. Mm. Mm. There's so so, I, so many, you know, so many, so many connections and there's so yeah, many. So you can, you know, you can talk, reach out to people in yeah. your family and it, every family has a, a, uh, a family historian that, you know, you may not know who it is, but you ask around and somebody will be able to tell you who's the keeper of the photographs mm -hmm. and who knows all the stories. Well, I'm curious, uh, as we begin to wrap up, uh, I got one more question for you as a child. What did you want to be when you grew up? I mean, at this point, you're retired. So I want to know, what, what did you want to be when you were a kid? 
I did not become what I wanted to be when I was a kid. It was, it's really funny. When I was a child, I was a creative person. So I had all types of, I wanted to be a ballerina. I wanted to be an ice capades, uh, ice skater. I thought about being an artist. I used I, when I was in first grade, I did a finger painting and it wound up being put in a bank in the neighborhood. So I thought, wow. you know, maybe I'll be an artist. Yeah. But I, um, at one point, this a serious occupation I thought about was being a librarian because I did like to read. And I was dissuaded from being a librarian when I realized that it would take a master's degree and I didn't see a way for me to accomplish that. Mm -hmm. And that's very interesting about children's uh, dreams. Mm -hmm. You know, you have to have positive self-esteem in order to accomplish a lot of your goals. Yeah. Now, later on in life, I developed, you know, a lot better, stronger self-esteem. Mm -hmm. But at that time, when I look back on it, I'm thinking, uh, so what? Lots of people get master's degrees. Mm -hmm. yeah. It just wasn't something I thought I could accomplish. So I said, well, I'm not going to be a librarian. A librarian, wow. And, and here you are now, a published author. My goodness, isn't that something? It just, it's amazing how things just kind of go full circle. Well, Sharon, we want to thank you so much for being on today's episode of Build Your Difference. And, to, and thank you to those of you watching for, for tuning in to Skills to Pay the Bills and today's segment of Build Your Difference. You know, we're real excited about the surge in entrepreneurship that's happening across the country and right here in our local community. And if you're just beginning, Remember the words of Oct author Octavia Butler, it's amazing what we can do if we simply refuse to give up.